Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you too. You have not talked much this week. No, I've been on vacation, mm-hmm. which means staying home. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I'm just you know, little time off. Does yeah. body good. <laughs> well, I agree. Did you do anything fun? Um, uh, I was home. I I did take a trip to IKEA, which. Let me tell you, it let me know that I'm really not prepared for people yet. Being around people, it it it, it frightens me. Um, I think that I, I I'm, I'm going to have to do a little work on myself to get myself ready for the library being open. Because yeah, people, I found myself like darting into like little living room setups so I can. Oh my gosh! People. Yeah, hiding in like the IKEA bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, kitchenette. Yeah, like I need to look at this kitchen now. <laughs> Just, yeah, to I get out of the way. Of the <laughs> well, I'm glad you got a taste, a taste of it. Yeah, it, 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 it let me know how not prepared I am for the change, which is crazy to think about because I never thought about it before. You know, it's just you yeah. around people. I know. Oh, I like your mug. It is very you. It matches. It looks like it looks like it's a similar color as your wall. Um, it's it's a little darker, but yeah. Actually, I made th- I painted this mug at um, Art and Clay. Yes, thank you, Art and Clay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it I painted it myself. Professionally done. Oh yes, it is. It looks great. I and did I'm- not. I did not make my own mug. My mug says "Name Your Poison," and it has Ooh. a skull crossbones on it. Um, I got this at Oak Island on vacation in college and its distinction is that it is the first mug I ever purchased with the intention of drinking coffee out of it because mm-hmm. until that time I would occasionally get a mug as a souvenir or whatever and it would like hold pens or pencils because I was a kid but then by the time I hit college I you know we went to on vacation and I was like I'm gonna get this mug and take it to school and drink coffee out of it and I do. <laughs> right? And that's coffee addiction. We know. (laughs) That was the start. You know, every time I drink out of this, I think, oh, yes, and coffee is my poison. That is (laughs) quite correct. (laughs) So, yeah. I see you have ducks behind you. Is this true? I I got new ducks this week. Did you? I did. I I, I have a problem. I see them and I just, I can't resist. So, I've got four for you today, but they're a set. They're a little summary and like that one's got its little, you know. Yes. And then that one's got the little life preserver. And that one's got the little steering wheel for the ship. Like, what is that called? What do you call a ship steering wheel? Ship mm-hmm. steering wheel? And, that one's got the anchor. and an anchor. It, yeah. Is it just the wheel? Um, Melanie is watching. She's a reference librarian. She could look that up for us. Hey, Melanie. <laughs> Don't you love how we just call you out like that? Yeah. Uh, she's like, oh, I wish I weren't watching now. Um, <laughs> I just read a book where there was a storm at sea and the wheel came off. And I'm trying to remember. It was a historical book. It was a real mm-hmm. book, like a real story. And I I think I I it a special name. Maybe it does. I don't know. Well, and Melanie. Andrew- are correct. There are much worse vices than ducks. That's a good uh, one. Stern wheel. Yeah, stern wheel. Stern wheel sounds right. Yeah. Terry says it's the rudder, but is the rudder the? I I don't know. You know what? You know what? I say we. I say. <laughs> Helm is another option. <laughs> Ship's wheel. Looks like it goes by maybe some other names. Also. If you're. At, if you're at, if you're at the helm, the rudder. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we had everyone helping us out here this morning. Ships parts at these points, locations on ships and parts of them. Um, but yeah, I think with the helm, you are controlling the ship. But then, do you think the helm is like the front of the ship, perhaps? And the I don't know. It's I I thought that was the stern. Was the front? Oh, All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> we obviously don't know our ship lore. We need to go back and read some of those uh, those those books. The oh, I can see them. Never mind. I can't think of his name. Um, 
Speaking of books that we should read, if you watched last week, um, we did find the How to Teach Your Cat to Dance book. Um, and it is available, it's, it's available on, is it Hoopla or Libby? It's Hoopla. It's Dancing with Cats is the title. Okay. Dancing with Cats. Um, Burton Silver is the author. Yes. Um, so if you just go to Hoopla and type in Dancing Cats, it'll come up. And I seriously recommend it because the pictures are hysterical. And I feel like, yeah, and I think that um, if anyone does check it out, I really would love it if you would send us a picture or a video of you teaching your cat to dance. Like, awesome. I don't want to force anyone or say that you have to, but I feel like it'd be a great component of talking about the things we talk about on here. If you try some one of those things out, it'd be great if you let, if you let us know. And we would definitely be all about a, a video of a cat dancing. I mean. Yes. Um, the Patrick O'Brien, the Horatio Hornblower series, Melanie knew who I was talking about. So we got it. That okay. was, all right. Those are the books I need to go back and reread because they're just, they all take place on ships. So, you know. Yes. And all the parts. <laughs> right. And clearly, clearly it stuck with you in a lot of ways, but just maybe not specifically what the wheel of the ship is called. <laughs> well, no, I haven't read them. So I need to go read them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe, maybe Leah, this summer you can read, you can read one of those. Do I have I'm a different time. Maybe. If I have time. Um, so you are on vacation, which means that you did probably not get the email that I got. I got an email um, this week and it told me that it was like a special month. Do you know what month it is? It's June. Now. It's June, but <laughs> you know what special month it is? Well, if it involves work, it must be audiobook month. It is. And I knew that you yeah. probably have like a month long celebration. Every day you do a different, you know, audiobook related. I probably celebrate audiobook month all year round. It's kind of one of those. I am much more likely to read a book if it's available in audio format. Um, I don't know why. It's not that I don't read books because I certainly do, but I read probably eight times as many audiobooks as I do regular books. Um, and yeah, I consider it reading, even though it's yes. listening. Yes. Um, that's. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, anytime anyone makes a comment like that, you know, it's like, well, you know, I read it, but no, you did. You did. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, and they say listening to audiobooks is a great thing for kids. Um, like it 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 helps with comprehension and they will understand words like above their reading level from the context. Like it it just it's really a great way for kids to to consume books too, not just reading them, but um listening to them. Um <clears throat> So, yes, it's audio. Yeah. There's a complete difference when you're listening to something, when you hear a tone, when you can hear the tone and you can mm -hmm. hear the emphasis and everything. It's just a completely different experience than reading it. And a lot of times it can be improved <laughs> um, yeah. depending on the type of book it is by hearing someone. Yeah. Although I will say sometimes like. There have been a couple of audiobooks where I was like, you know, I, I can't, I can't, there, I just, I can't get behind this narrator's voice. It doesn't work for me. That yeah. has happened a few times, but not often. More normally I can get past that, you mm -hmm. know, when you're a great narrator, yeah. but there are some narrators out there who are just phenomenal. Yes. Do you have so. any favorites? Do you have like a, because on both, I think on all of our audio mm -hmm. platforms, you can like, click on the narrator's name and see the other things that the narrator has done. Yeah. And then, because if you like a particular narrator, sometimes it doesn't even matter what they're reading. Like you, you're interested in the story because they mm -hmm. give something to it. Um, I think, um, let me see. Davina Porter is fabulous. Um, she narrates the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Um, she, look, it was a little jarring for me at first when I started listening to her voice sounded older and more mature than the character um but later in the series as the character ages it works so that first book was a little bit like hmm. but yeah. after a couple chapters i would it didn't yeah it got i got used to it um but she's fabulous because she you know in that series you know she's got a there are some french lines she's got to say some scott gaelic lines she's got to say she's got you know she's just she's able to do all that um, there are some Native American words she says. I mean, she just she she 
you know, to have that range to be able to do all of that, I think is really good. Um, Ileana Kadushin, um, she narrates the the Twilight Saga, among other things. She's got one of those voices that I just really like. Um, Iggy Toma and Greg Boudreau, they both have voices that, I don't know, I just like listening to. I'll admit I've encountered them in romance novels, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's a safe space. Hey, every reader the book, every book the reader. Um, and uh, Will, oh, Andrea you just uh, in with Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton is also really great. He narrated Ready Player One, which was, if you haven't read that book by Ernest Klein, I, I really highly recommend it. It it It's one of those books that I thought I would not be interested in because it's about video games and playing games, but there's so much like 80s nostalgia in that book. And at one will at one point, Will Wheaton has to talk about Will Wheaton. And so there's this whole level of like, I don't know. It's, it's very, very meta when you, <laughs> you know, but he is a fabulous narrator, especially for that book where he is talking about himself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, but I, I will say one of the, the books that I loved the most listening to just like the narration was, it was a juvenile book. It was Star Girl by Jerry Spinelli. And it was narrated by John Ritter. And so it, it's been several years because, you know, he passed away, unfortunately. But um, it was one of those it's an older man looking back on his his youth and like telling the story of this year that he knew this girl and like how she changed his life and it just it just oh. yeah and hear it, his voice was just perfect for that it just yeah it's one of those books that I would love to read listen to I need to I need to get that one out and listen to it again that sounds oh. good. we have a ton of recommendations for narrators in our comments yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, Luke Daniels Kate Reading or reading, I'm not sure how it would be pronounced. Um, Devito oh. Porter, Stephen Fry, <clears throat> and Jim Dale. I haven't heard the Stephen Fry um, version of Harry Potter. I would love to. I really, really would. Um, but Jim Dale is fabulous those books and like the way he does the different characters gives them all their own voice that just it's it's great well i have something that i have to admit i don't i actually don't know if this space is safe enough for me to admit this um, to be honest um okay so i am a very big harry potter fan i most people who know me know that I, my heart is racing. I have never, I have never listened to the Harry Potter audiobooks by Jim Dale, even though I know that they're so good. And even though I know that so many people love it, I just, I've never, I've just never done it. And it's because every, I've read the book so many times and mm -hmm. there's something about picking it up and that feeling. And I read it for the first time when I was in fifth grade. And there's something about that exact paperback feeling in my hands, but I graduated college by the time I read this, Allison. I know. I'm sorry. Me so old, but, um, um, but, but there's something I about that. that. I, want, I want to have that, ex have had that experience. So maybe I should listen to those that, at least the first one. Well, the first one is available in Hoopla. No, it is. It is. They added, yes, they added the first one. To Hoopla re relatively recently, right during the pandemic, um, mm -hmm. the first one to Hoopla, no wait, no wait, uh, no wait equals no excuses, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. So I'm challenging you. Okay, to listen to that audio book this month. It's okay. audiobook month. You've got to give it a try. And okay. I will admit, I um, I only listened to them for the first time last summer. I went through the whole series. I listened to them. And I think the thing that kept me from listening to them for the longest time was that I had to wait in between books. Cause I like to like go, 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 go one book to the next without any waiting. Yeah. And, um, wow, we got lots of, I know it's great. Um, but yes, 
no waiting. Listen to listen to Harry okay. Potter. I'll do that. I'll report back to everybody about it as a and I do listen to audiobooks. I'm definitely not new to audiobooks. I always have one at least one going at a time and um yeah. so that won't be new to me for some reason. I've just never just ne but there's also it seems like there's a difference between someone narrating an audiobook and someone performing an audiobook and I do think mm -hmm. you as a performer Definitely. Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with narrating either, but there are people who they put on the voices. They, yeah, yeah. Like you're probably one of those. Yeah, and um, there's also like there's a difference like when you've got like multiple people narrating a book too. Like sometimes it's just one person. They do they do everything, yeah. and sometimes yeah. you will have like like two people like a book that's sold like from two perspectives. So you yeah. have two. I people. love. Different narrators. I do too. It helps me keep the characters separate. Except yeah. occasionally I'll have a problem where like this character's voice sounds more like that character description to me. Really? And, I'll, and I'll be like, so I will get the characters confused because I think someone sounds like they should be the other character. I don't know. That yeah. happens. <laughs> but and then sometimes you have like a full cast. Those are those are much more performances, also. So. Uh, the The Testaments by Margaret Atwood has um, multiple uh, has three actresses who are narrating, so they're also very good at performing because they're actresses. And um, it was a really good listening experience. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. Yeah, we have The Help was performed with multiple people. That's good to know. Um, and John Waters' audiobooks. We have a comment that he does an awesome job of sounding like he's just telling you a story instead of reading something to you, which oh, does yeah. make a little difference. Yeah, sometimes when authors do their own books, they really add something to it. Like it just, you know, it's much more personal, and it just yeah. it feels like, like she said, more of a conversation with somebody rather than the yes, reading. especially. If it's a memoir or a personal story. I used to, I started listening to audiobooks probably like most people as CDs in my car. And I would feel like I had that person next to me when it was a memoir or some type of personal story. I felt like that person was sitting next to me just talking to me in my car while I was driving to work, which was, I don't know, it was just a really nice feeling. And so when the authors read their own work, you get, you definitely get some of that. I do think sometimes you can get authors reading their own work. Um, you should not. You should not because they're just not naturally good speakers. I, right. if I wrote a book, no one would want me to read it. Um, <laughs> the audio version. <laughs> I know my limits, um, and yet here I am talking in front of people. But I actually got to experience like recording an audio book um, last year. I went, I went to Hoopla, and uh, during the, and I got to because they they've got a setup there for recording audio books because all of like the DreamWorks, not not DreamWorks, Dream, Dream. Dreamscape audiobooks? Yes. Yes. Dreamscape audiobooks. Part of, some of them are recorded there. Some lots of the like the narrators who like do narration all the time have their own setups at their own house. But you go into this room and this room is like silent. There's all this like sound absorbing on the walls and like it is so quiet in there. It's a little bit freaky. And um you put on these headphones and you can't hear anything except like your own heartbeat and like every sniffle and like it it was it was a very weird experience because I've never been in a space that was so quiet before. That's weird. And then all you can hear is your own voice, which for most of us is just a gigantic nightmare. My voice was shaking really like I was so nervous. I'm like, this isn't going anywhere. We're not doing anything with this. Why am I so scared? But I was. It was yeah, I don't no. really allow well <laughs> trauma yeah. from your childhood. I wasn't a good reader. Um, mm -hmm. but, so, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was That's very funny. you could hear my voice shake. It was funny. We have more comments. One being the suggestion or the comment that they listen to audiobooks at 1.5 speed, which is something I didn't even really realize I could do until not that long ago. And it does, especially I listen to a lot of nonfiction and there's a lot more pauses in that because it is a lot more presentational. It's more narration and less performance. And I listened to one and it sounded like I was listening to like a newscast or these long, you know, pauses and bolded statements and stuff. And when I realized I could do that, I could compress it. It sounded so much more conversational. And um, so I definitely recommend that too. If, if you find yourself weighed down. I hate that. I absolutely I hate, hate it. So, but that's just me. Everyone's got their own preference. But I, I listen to a lot of fiction, so maybe it's different that way. It very well um, could be. 
I I hate listening to, to narration sped up, except for this one. I listened to this one book where this woman was so dramatic in her read. I was just, yeah. That was the only book I ever sped up, but other than that, no. That's funny. We also had a recommendation for the Wrinkle in Time series and Madeline Lingle read it and she says it was like her grandma telling her a story. And then also Eat, Pray, Love being a very personal story. So read by the author makes that listening experience also very personal. Um, so. Yeah, I love, I, I was looking on my, I'll admit I was on my phone here for a second because I couldn't remember one of my very favorite audiobooks um, that I listened to was Good Omens by Neil Gaiman. And um, it's a TV show now with Amazon and everything, but the audio version, and I haven't seen the show, um, and I have not read the print book, but I listened to the audio version and it was one of the ones that's performed and it was really engaging and entertaining. And that that's one of my top favorite um, audio books that I've ever read. I think probably for listening enjoyment, the John Ritter and then the Will Wheaton are like okay. two way up there. Yeah. Because of the narrators, yeah. Yeah, well, it's good to have recommendations for things. And then when you were talking, um, Will Wheaton. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, I know her, so. <laughs> Will Wheaton is narrating a re-released version of The Martian. The Martian oh. is re-releasing the audio because it was purchased. I, I want to say I want to say it's an Amazon thing. I want to say Amazon got the rights and is re-recording it because it's for Audible or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, Will Wheaton, if you like him as a narrator, is going to be doing a new version of The Martian. Okay. Good. Um, Good. Yeah. Oh, wait. And Melanie says, I just listened to it. Was she talking about? The Martian? Or no, but she might have been talking about Good Omens. Either way, I don't know. She'll clarify. (laughs) Um, And then also in our comments, Audrey has posted several infographics and links about um, the benefits of listening to audiobooks, especially for children and literacy development. So those are really worthwhile to check out because I do know some people may may think that listening to an audiobook is not as engaging as reading one. And it just simply from the literacy perspective isn't true. Right. And um, if you're looking for where to get audiobooks and you don't want to pay $15 to Amazon every month for Audible, the library, um, we've got audiobooks in our Overdrive collection. So through the Libby app, uh, our Hoopla collection through the Hoopla app, and RB Digital through the RB Digital app. Um, There are links to all of those on the website. If you go to fcdlibrary.org and you go under the streaming and downloads tab, um, there is um, a link to all of those and you can get to them for so you can see what's what. But all of those do audiobooks. And in the comments, we've also been pointed out that the original Martian, the Martian was re-narrated by R.C. Bray, which put him on the map as an audiobook narrator. And he's very popular in like the sci-fi audiobook sphere mm-hmm. for originally narrating the Martian. So okay. you can listen to both and figure out what version and narrator you prefer, and then get back to us. Yeah. Please, in the comments. Well, that has been a very engaging audiobook. Yeah. Um, are you listen- Are you listening to an audiobook currently? Do you have one going right now? Um, I, I have a silly romance going right now. There's no such thing. No such thing. It's, <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to um, a girl named, a girl named? A girl named Zippy. Um, it's a memoir from several years ago, a book club that I'm in is reading it. And um, it's narrated by the author. And it's one of those ones that is much more entertaining and engaging for being read yeah. by her. So I'm listening to that. Um, I don't think I have any others going right now. Sometimes I have more than one at a time if they're like two really different things. Yeah. Um, but I because, have more than one going. <laughs> right. But because two books going at the same time, a real book, an ebook, and an audio book. Although sometimes I'll have like two audiobooks and a and a regular book. It just I'm all over the place. I'm never reading just one book at a time. Yeah, and something about though like being able to pick up a print book, move between print books is easier for me than moving between audiobooks because like I can like sit down and read like a page of a print book differently than I can listen to like one minute of an audio. Mm-hmm. book. I, I can't sink in as fast, I guess, when it's audio, maybe. Yeah. And I can kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I do I, have some, sorry, go ahead. I think having like the different narrators makes it easy for my mind to switch. Like, okay, we're, we're listening to this story now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, yeah, um, I, I'm reading, 
okay, I'm reading a lot of, I'm reading a lot of things. I'm trying to like filter out like what, okay, what is the thing I want to talk about? Um, I'm currently reading a book called A Season on the Wind by Ken Kaufman. And it is about seasonal bird, spring bird migration around Lake Erie and about um, building um, wind farms near there and how that impacts the bird migration. Oh, um, yeah. How it would or will impact. I'm not super far into it yet, um, but the fun fact that I have learned um, there is that so there's a lot of marshland up by Lake Erie and preserves and everything. I'm sure other people know much more about this than I do because I'm. This is the first time I've ever learned about anything that has to do with it. Um, but one of the like partners in conservation for marshes are actually like duck hunting clubs oh. and 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 bird hunting because the marsh needs to be preserved for them to have a good habitat. And so they often, even though like in your mind or other people's minds or whatever, those two causes might seem opposed. They're really not because they're not, they're not hunting to demolish a species. It's like a, you right. know, and so they, they work kind of almost work together with conservationists at times to keep habitats intact. I'm only like 20% of the way into the book. So that, that's what I'm reading right now. And I thought you might be interested in it because it was about ducks. <laughs> yes, I am also reading a book about ducks. Yes. Um, finally, something interesting. It's, uh, a juvenile book and I am not ashamed at all that I read books for kids or books for teens they're great for a teen girl. everything is good you we do not need to have any of that talk here right but this book is about rubber ducks you see all the rubber ducks on there <laughs> they're a group of friends uh the one and onlys they're all um single children so they don't have any siblings so they call themselves the one and onlys they solve mysteries like the lunch meat at, in the cafeteria that they serve, but um, a yard where well, you wake up one morning and there's a, a yard in their neighborhood covered in rubber ducks. So that's a right up your alley. Well, right up my alley. Yep. Um, I think we've had some good recommendations yeah. in there for for books. Stamped racism, oh. anti racism, and you. Um, read by Jason Reynolds. He's wonderful. So mm -hmm. that's really good. Um, and I know that. Um, Right now, if you go to Overdrive, there's a book on racism. I think it's So You Want to Talk About Race. Um, I think that was the title of it. Um, but it's one of those no waiting books. So if you are you want to listen to something timely in that manner, um, there's, there's a yeah. book, there's a great book for you in the Overdrive collection, No Waiting. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think they have, they might, actually might have several and the no waiting collection. And that is something that if you are haven't been on overdrive in a while, you may not know about the no waiting collection. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, if you come to our library, you have the lucky day collection, you can browse where it doesn't allow holds and the, you know, you can't um, renew it and things like that. And there's something sort of like that on, um, they kind of have a lucky day. Yeah, they call that the lucky day. Th this book that I'm talking about though, is it's not one of those books. It's not one of the lucky day books that's only one week. Um, okay. One of those ones that everyone can borrow. Oh, okay. It's kind of like the big read. That's also the kind of Jewish book, too. Which is kind of like a community read book where like everyone can borrow it at the same time. Um, but yeah. that's the book right now. It's it's on race. Right. Okay. I think both of those are sort of newish features, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the big read, they do it like for a month, a couple times a year. So. Okay. Okay, that's how I got Little Women, I think. I think Little okay. Women is one of those, um, which I checked out, I want to say, like six times. It took me that long to get through it um, yeah. because it's, it's an awfully long book to have listened to. It's like 24 hours or something. How? What's the longest book you've ever listened to, Leah? I think 53. Is that one it, of the Harry Potters? It was one of the um, Outlanders. Okay, Whew. 53. Three. Yikes. I go back and double. But I definitely in the 50s 50 yeah and that series i listened to like one right after the other like no waiting it was so how a many lot collective hours i would love to know how many collective hours you spent listening to that oh Cause just, cause that's just like which i mean you spend that much time reading too for some but for some reason seeing the number is very dramatic i yeah. think <laughs> i and I'm I'm a slow reader, so it would have taken me at least that long to read the book. I'm one of those people, like, some people, like, read very quickly. 
I read as if I were speaking it aloud. So I like put the emphasis or the pause in there where it should be. And I will find myself rereading sentences. So I put that like in my head, I put that emphasis or the pause where it should have been if I read the sentence wrong. So yeah, it's actually faster for me to listen to the book. It sounds like you are definitely a performer of your own book rather than a narrator. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We have a lot more comments. Um, I guess we should probably wrap up soon too, but. Um, Children's and YA are great. They love it. Rubber Ducks love it. Yeah. Hate You Give is streaming on free on Amazon. That, that would be a good thing to watch too. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad we got to talk about audiobooks today. I maybe next week we can talk about some print books because we have so much, we have so much stuff. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Some new stuff. And um I've got some good ones, I think. And I'll probably have a totally different set of good ones next week. But yeah, that that time just went so quickly. It, I'm it glad really did. Was able to join us today. Me too. This has been fun. Um it was nice to have coffee with all of you. Yes. This morning and not just ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back here next Friday at 1030 talking library world. If you want to join yeah. us. Then. Yeah. Well, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.